So it's a great honor to be um, invited here to talk about the work that I did as a graduate student um, in Joshua Kuhn's laboratory at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, also in collaboration with um, Thermo here in Bremen. Um, so what I hope to do today is kind of build that bridge between the Orbitrap technology that Alexander has just talked about and maybe the world that most of you live in, which is targeted analysis, looking at pesticides and dioxins. Um, so I'm going to start out just by um, telling you about the instrument that we have put together to hyphenate these two worlds, um, go into the uh, analytical characteristics of its operation, and then um, go on to some applications. So even though um, all that Alexander has talked about today has been about an, an LC FTMS world, GC is no stranger to FTMS. Um, within academia, uh, since 1980, um, FTMS instruments, namely the FTS ICR instrument, um, have been hyphenated to GC or electron ionization um, type sources. And these are coming out of uh, the Gross Lab, from McLafferty, and most recently, um, Saluki at the University of, uh, in Maine. Um, in 2008, after the introduction of the Orbitrap, we asked, well, why not an Orbitrap? And um, since that time, uh, I, in, the Joshua, in Joshua Kuhn's lab, have been working on uh, trying to answer that question. So after uh, showing in, as a proof of principle on a LTQ Orbitrap um, enabled with ETD that GC created or electron ionization created ions could be analyzed in an Orbitrap, we went on to trying to build something that would be useful to the community that had a potential for um, commercialization. Um, and that was based on uh, the Xactive Benchtop LCMS, which, as Alexander explained, has an atmospheric ion source. Um, ions are directed then into the C-trap and the Orbitrap. And to provide our um, interface to the, the gas chromatograph, we then took a single quad GCMS and by removing and plugging this area here, flipping these guys around, we then were able to plug in the GC on this side to form this monster. And uh, this is the GC quadruple Orbitrap MS that um, we built and now resides in Joshua Kuhn's laboratory in, in Wisconsin. And um, so here you see the uh, entrance from the GC an electron ionization or chemical ionization source. Ions then travel down this path um, through a resolving quadrupole for mass selection, and then further to the C-trap, where they are trapped and then injected into the mass spectrometer. We also have a uh, collision cell for doing beam type um, CID. And so this instrument together, um, took a lot of modification of the previous two instruments that I showed you, and um, we were able then to fully characterize how this could work in um, a application space that is more relevant to um, what you guys work on. So first off is how, how fast can we scan? And that's very important, of course, for uh, gas chromatography. and while the scan cycle itself is not much different from the LCMS-based instruments, some changes had to be made due to the um, high reactivity of ions made by electron-based methods. Um, and that slowed down the instrument a little bit, but not to any significant degree. So what you see here is we can achieve 24 hertz by lowering the resolution to 8,500, um, and up to about... Uh, 100,000 uh, resolution, we can have um, scan rates greater than 4 hertz at high ion fluxes. And so that's what um, 
I have said here that we're at least amenable to slower GC separations up to 100,000. And for applications that do not require a resolution that high, um, we can operate in this region here, which is very amenable to GC separations. So first thing we looked at um, was the spectrum of FC43. Um, probably all know and love this compound. And uh, here is a typical spectrum from the uh, GC quadrupole orbitrap uh, for FC43. Um, first, you should notice that we are operating with the same um, high mass accuracy as seen uh, with other um, incarnations of the Orbitrap mass analyzer um, to give an average of um, less than one ppm. And um, what you could also notice by looking at these two peaks here, um, of which this is a water reaction of uh, this peak from trapping in the, in the sea trap, that we have relatively low levels of water reactions. So then if we go to um, the NIST reference spectrum, uh, if one is familiar with trapping quad um, spectra of FC43, we know that water reactions are a big deal. So by... Um, through a lot of optimizations of the gases and the tubing and um, the scan cycle, we were able to get to very low water reactions that make our spectra uh, match well to reference spectra. And so for instance, here is hex hexachloroethane, um, where again, we have sub PPM mass accuracy and it matches well to the single quad reference spectrum. Here is decafluoral uh, biphenyl. And again, the same thing, low uh, mass errors, high resolution, and fidelity um, for library matches. We also integrated a um, quadrupole for mass selection for doing um, selected ion monitoring as well as um, MRM or PRM-based experiments. Um, and so here I show the uh, the isolation characteristics um, as they relate to transmission for the quadrupole at various masses. You can see that at unit mass resolution, we um, do quite well with this quadrupole, which is a simple round rod quadrupole um, with 60 to 40% transmission. And so what that gives us is the ability um, to enhance our, enhance our sensitivity um, in the presence of high matrix. So here, what you see is a sample of octafluoronaphthalene at, um, this is 10 picograms on column. And it is um, in various increasing concentrations of diesel matrix. And even at 5% diesel, where you start to see significant chr chromatographic changes, we are able to still see um, octafluoronaphthalene at, with high um, mass accuracy, separated from the matrix ions, as well as high signal to noise. And if then we take a separation, we are able also with our quadrupole to do targeted um, selected ion monitoring, here shown for 93 compounds in the an EPA 8270-based um, mixture. Um, so here we've targeted each of these um, compounds, and I've shown a uh, region down here where we have two co-alluding species. And again, um, in our SIM window, we get high mass accuracy for both ions, as well as um, a, around 10 to 15 points over each peak. Um, then if we run a dilution series, we can uh, see that with this configuration, um, we are able to get uh, fairly linear responses over a wide dynamic range and indeed um, reach detection limits of five femtogram for many of these compounds in the SIM uh, experiment. 
And this is all done with fairly good RSDs over the dynamic range. Also important um, when we get into uh, many of the EPA-based methods that we like to run are uh, isotopin or topomer ratio errors. Um, and here I've just taken those 93 compounds that I showed you before and looked at the isotopic ratio error um, shown there. And what you can see here is it is, of course, related to the um, intensity of the ion itself. But above a, cer a certain threshold, we are, in general, um, having errors less than, on average, um, 3%. So how can we apply that to the, um, the samples and the applications that you guys care about? So here I have a sample um, that you guys are probably all uh, familiar with of um, tetrachlorodibenzodioxins spike or uh, NEAT um, injected at 10 femtograms on column. And this is just to show uh, reproducibility of our detection. Um, they all elute at different times. And what you can see is that for the more intense isotope shown in the dark red, um, our RSDs for the um, area under the curve reproducibility is, is quite good for 10 femtograms on column. Um, and similarly for the uh, lower isotope at 15% RSD. Um, up above, I'm showing the, uh, the ratio between the two isotopes. And um, we are, for most of the isotopes within 10 to 20 percent air um, at 10 femtograms on column. So then if we look at linearity over this range, now from 5 femtogram for um, uh, this congener to 5 or 100 femtograms for this congener here, we see that um, we have a fairly linear uh, response. Um, our ratio errors stay relatively within this 20% uh, bracketing. And we have 15% RSD over this range of uh, concentrations for the congeners on column. So taking this, we decided to go into something real. Um, and we took a pooled human blood sample and um, in which dioxins and uh, furans were spiked. And they're spiked at a concentration of roughly 10 to 15 femtograms on column. And so here I'm showing the response for um, the tetrachloral dibenzodioxins. And what we did was we used a sim window for um, each isotope of the dioxins, of the uh, native dioxin, and then a full scan for the internal standard. Um, just so you could see the entire broadband mass spectrum for th the um, isotopic distribution here. So again, um, both ions were detected with good mass accuracy. Um, yes. And in the broadband mass spectrum, we see four of the uh, isotopes for this um, internal standard. Uh, with good mass accuracy as well. And here is um, some information on the ratio errors, well within 10% uh, of expected. Going on to uh, hexachlorinated um, dibenzofurans, um, we have here, again, a detection of four of these congeners at 10 to 15. 15 femtograms on column, low uh, mass errors for um, both the SIM and the broadband spectrum, as well as low ratio errors, uh, well, w w in general, within 10%. And lastly, um, hexachlorinated dioxins. It is the same story here. Uh, three congeners were detected 
uh, with low mass errors and um, ratio errors, uh, some of which fall within uh, the ranges desired. Um, and then lastly, I want to also mention that this instrument has a lot of analysis modalities. So um, in addition to EI, CI is possible with any reagent gas. And we also have a collision cell that allows um, data-dependent or uh, SRM-type experiments. And so given that and the ability to collect high mass accuracy and high resolution spectrum, spectra over a, a broad mass range, uh, we're, the GC quadruple orbitrap is also amenable to screening applications. And um, here I'm just going to show uh, within metabolomics how that bears out. So um, I'll go through this quickly. We took four plants um, that had different enrichments in uh, carbon and nitrogen, ground them up and extracted their metabolites. And using high mass accuracy, using um, high resolution, as well as using uh, the uh, differences in mass shifts uh, from carbon and heavy carbon and nitrogen uh, isotope incorporation, um, we were able to not only identify 98 putative metabolites without using any sort of um, spectral matching, we were able to um, collect using a intelligent data dependent algorithm uh, MSMS spectra for every compound in this mixture of the um, MSMS spectra of the most intact ion species. And all compounds were then identified as being the, the only possible um, compound that could have made this ion. And again, even over um, a screening or discovery-based application, um, our isotopic ratio errors are well within 5%. And our mass errors um, also fall here uh, within plus or minus 2 ppm, um, as well as the isotopic ratio errors. With that, I'd like to thank uh, the Josh Kuhn Laboratory uh, for providing me with the opportunity to uh, work on such a great project, and um, Thermo Fisher for uh, the uh, collaboration that we had and uh, also the funding uh, provided to us. And with that, I'll take any questions. <laughs>